Welcome to Practically Social Episode 6, dedicated to discussing depression. By the end of this video, you should understand key concepts about depression, suicide risk and treatment options, as well as some of my ideas for reducing the burden depression creates. Hit subscribe and the little bell down there for new drops every week from Practically Social. The more subscribers we get, the more people can be helped by these videos. All right, folks, the sun's been shining here more and more each day and we step away from old man winter and into spring, which I'm really looking forward to. Dark gray days really have an effect on the emotions and depression is certainly one of the emotions that are hard to fight off during the winter and early spring. As we talk today about depression, keep in mind that about 30% of the US population suffers from it. That's one in three. I consider this a significant health problem, both generally and personally. Due to personal experience and years of working with clients with this particular problem, I also consider myself to have a unique approach to the subject matter. I'll share some common therapist recommendations and my personal take on what helps at the end of this video. The major points during today's presentation will be the taboo nature of discussing depression, diagnosis, warning signs, suicide risk, treatment options, and suggested tips for reducing depression. In next week's video, I'll be covering the anxiety depression feedback loop, so stay tuned for that one. Depression's been described by various people throughout time as a heavy weight, feeling of hopelessness, being down in the dumps, feeling blah, or just an overall feeling of sadness. Public opinion seems to center inaccurately on depression being a choice, a form of laziness, or a problem that's all in someone's head. Depression, like many medical conditions such as diabetes and heart disease, can be inherited and exacerbated by stress. With proper diagnosis, treatment, and maintenance, depression can be understood as a serious medical condition, unavoidable in many cases, and treated with professional help. Depression is highly misunderstood. No one asks for it, nor do they want to keep it. Understand that depression saps motivation, pleasure, and energy. It's not to be treated lightly either. Many of my clients agreed with me that depression is one of the most taboo topics to bring up in any conversation. Others don't want to hear it. Try to talk them out of it. Use slogans or cheerleading tactics or try to tell them it's just a figment of their imagination. Few of these attempts are helpful to sufferers of depression. Depression to me is a bit like being stuck in a cage with a very large and very strong beast. There are days where the beast wins, and there are a lot of days where you can win. Most of the victories come from taking small steps to ensure that the beast doesn't defeat you by making you think nothing will change, that you can't get up, and that you're better off alone, stuck in the cage with it. For a lot of people, talking about depression doesn't seem like a good idea. Their silence in society's rejection of the idea that we should ever be depressed, or heaven forbid talk about it, can literally be deadly. I'm here with you because I understand just how dangerous that can be. I'm also here to encourage you to end your silence. Help yourself and others. You never know how what you say may open a door for someone else and relieve them. Someone once told me, we're only as sick as our secrets. Depression shouldn't have to be a secret. You agree, right? When we define depression, we're discussing a range from mild to severe. On one hand, we have situational depression, which can go away when circumstances change. This could be due to recent stress, loss of a job, moving away from friends and family, or a breakup. Severe depression on the other end of the range can be much more serious and requires longer treatment until it can be managed effectively. Severe depression should be seen as a magnified and longer duration of sadness that affects daily functioning, motivation, and outlook. Most people struggle with low mood occasionally, though they may not need therapy or medication to help them with it. Severe depression, on the other hand, benefits most from regular intervention. As defined by the DSM-5, depression has hallmark symptoms such as depressed mood most of the day, nearly every day, loss of interest in, or pleasure in doing things, weight loss or weight gain, insomnia or oversleeping, irritability, feeling worthlessness, hopelessness, thoughts of death or suicide, and trouble concentrating. It isn't necessary for all these symptoms to be present for a diagnosis of major depressive disorder, though having five of these symptoms is considered significant 
and you should seek a mental health professional if you're suffering with these types of concerns. Once you've seen a professional, they should help you understand the diagnosis clearly. You can ask questions and then discuss the options for treatment from there. A second ago, I talked about suicidal thoughts. If you're having suicidal thoughts and you cannot stop thinking about it, please stop viewing this video and call 911 or the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. They also have a live chat if for some reason you don't feel comfortable talking on the phone. Over the years, I've had many clients tell me they felt this way. Please understand that a therapist, psychiatrist, or doctor may ask you a series of uncomfortable questions if you've mentioned that you're having depression or suicidal thoughts. They may feel it's necessary to protect your safety. If they consider you to be at risk, they may ask someone to take you to the hospital for further evaluation. Please understand if the uncomfortable questions come up or if they have concerns and need to have you hospitalized, they're putting your safety first and doing a responsible job of protecting you. Additionally, if you know someone who's mentioned they feel suicidal or that they're thinking of death frequently, saying such things as, sometimes I think it might be better if I wasn't here or I just wish all of this would end, please ask them immediately if they've made any plans to kill themselves. It is critical to ask this specific question as uncomfortable as it may feel. You may not get a second chance. Very few people, especially those who have severe depression, are going to joke about this. If they mention something like this, it is your obligation to potentially save someone's life. There is a tool that can help you discuss this more with someone. Years ago, Columbia University developed a six-item questionnaire to assess for suicide risk. It's called the Columbia Protocol. If you or someone you know has depression, you should keep this tool nearby. That way, risk for suicide can be assessed, and if necessary, you or someone else can obtain help from a local health provider. A mental health professional can also help walk you through this questionnaire. The main point here is this. At times, many people may think of death, dying, or in some cases, that they want to die and end their suffering. If they've made a plan of any sort, it's time for them to go to a hospital to protect their safety and help them get a recovery plan in place. Oftentimes when someone mentions thoughts of death and I can confirm that they don't have a plan, I will walk them through writing down a safety plan. A safety plan is a series of steps to follow when people are severely depressed and may be considering self-harm or suicide. They're helpful and should be kept very conveniently. A good therapist can also help you put together a safety plan or ask a family member and begin one using online resources. I will put links to the Columbia Protocol and a basic safety plan template in the description below for this video. Okay, so we discussed the definition for depression that behavioral professionals use and key points regarding suicide. I hope this has been helpful so far. Now let's talk about some of the treatments that are recommended for depression. Remember that treatment and recovery are very personal. You should make decisions based on what you feel is best for you and your family member. If for some reason you don't think you're getting the care that you need from one facility or set of providers, you can go somewhere else where you do feel comfortable. Now, I'll list some of the more common treatments for depression and then I'll share some of my own suggestions. First, moderate to severe depression isn't going to go away on its own. As mentioned before, there seem to be a lot of people out there who don't want to hear if you're sad, if you're grieving, or if you've been struggling with this since you were a small child. It is a sad reality. The good news is there are many professionals out there who do care and they want to help. Seek help for depression, whether it's a support group, an online resource, a local mental health provider, your doctor, or in some cases, religious leaders. I've also worked with several first responders and military members over the years. One thing is for certain. Many of them flatly told me they won't seek help 
because they think it will be considered a weakness and that it could end up on their employment records, reviews, or evaluations for further employment. Trust me, if you seek help, it will be kept confidential by a professional, unless you're a danger to yourself or others. Many people have sought help. It was kept in private, and they're still working the front lines. If this is you, I'm asking you respectfully to seek help anyway. No one should be alone on this battlefield. The enemy is stronger than you think. Walk tall and ask for help on your way to victory. Now back to treatments. Your medical or mental health provider may discuss medication with you. Medication is an option, not a requirement. If you don't think medication is right for you right now, I understand. It's your choice whether or not you go this route. Both practical evidence and studies have shown that with moderate to severe depression that medication and therapy work best when paired together rather than just doing one or the other. Individual therapy, group therapy, and developing a treatment plan, safety plan if necessary, and deep reflective work with a therapist can go a long way to helping you understand where depression comes from and what you might do to address it. Each therapist has their own approach. Be upfront and honest with them. Exercise, socializing, meditation, and journaling can also be a huge help for those with depression. Take it from me that a combination of things will be most effective. The most effective tools, I believe, are exercise, challenging negative thoughts, and taking action, even if it's just a little bit, in opposition to the thoughts you have that you should give up, stay in bed, or avoid everything altogether. I invite you to ask for help and to figure this out with a guide who can help summon all of your courage in exploring what works best and what doesn't. All right, a note on substances. Remember that alcohol and other drugs aren't a good combination with depression. Alcohol and other drugs can also cancel the benefits of any antidepressant medication. Use of substances increases risk for people with depression, especially risk for suicide. If substances are part of your life in combination with depression, your therapist or medical professional can help you look at some options. So in conclusion, if you need help with depression and don't feel comfortable discussing with the people around you, please reach out to a professional, a group, or online resources. You're not alone, and there are caring people available to talk with you. The Suicide Prevention Hotline is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, at no cost, both in English and Spanish. Depression may be taboo in some social circles. It's not taboo here at Practically Social. Please subscribe, share, and like this video. All of your support and comments are appreciated. Next week on Practically Social, I'll be covering how anxiety and depression can create a vicious cycle that becomes very challenging, as well as what you can do to identify this. See you then.